So why have we spent so much energy talking about electromagnetic radiation? We've talked about its wave nature, we've talked about its particle nature, we have been spending all of our time talking about light, electromagnetic radiation. And the whole reason we've had this discussion about it is because we have to understand light to understand electrons. And that's our goal. We want to understand the electronic structure of the atom. We are finally ready to examine why chemicals behave the way they do, why atoms gain and lose electrons. It's all about the, the nature of the electrons themselves. So we're ready to look at the experiments that start seeing that interface between light and electrons. Now we've seen a little bit of interface already because we did the photoelectric effect. In the photoelectric effect we saw a tie together between light and electrons. We're going to be looking at other experiments that are really tying this together within an atom itself. Okay, so let's talk about something called an emission spectrum. This is what the definition of an emission spectrum is. It's either the continuous or could be a line spectrum of a radiation emitted from a substance. Okay, now what's continuous? Continuous would be what you're used to when you see a rainbow. You're seeing all the different wavelengths of visible light. That's a continuous spectrum. You can also have a line spectrum where when it goes through a prism, you see a line here of light, you see no light, and you see a line here of light. That's a line spectrum, okay? And so it's being emitted from a substance and it's being passed through some kind of uh, prism or gradient that causes those wavelengths to spread out. Okay, so this is how you get one. First of all, you have to energize a sample until it produces light. How do you do that? Well, in the case of the burner on your stove, you turn it on, electricity passes through it, the resistance causes it to heat up, and that causes it to glow. In the case of a neon light, you take neon and put it in a tube, you pass electricity through that tube, the electrons of the electricity are hitting the atoms and it is um, energizing that and we see it as a neon light. So that's what you do first. The next thing is you pass that light through a prism. Okay, now that doesn't have to be a prism, but there are other means by which to do this, but this is an example. You can pass that light through a prism. Now, it does not have to be in the visible region. You can pass electromagnetic radiation in any place, okay? So we have this little region that's visible light, but we have regions outside of the visible light on both sides. But when that gets passed through, Okay, what happens? Well, what it does is it separates out the wavelengths, and we call that a rainbow, but it doesn't have to be a rainbow because it doesn't have to be in the visible light region, but this is an example. That rainbow is the spectrum that gets produced, okay? So it doesn't, like I say, it doesn't have to necessarily be in the visible region. It could be outside the visible region, but it's easier for us to understand it because we can see the visible region, okay? So here's a schematic of it we see a tube, all right? That tube right there is a hydrogen lamp. What does that mean? It's got hydrogen gas inside that tube. They pass an electrical current through it until that glows. That produced light is going to pass through a little slit. It's going to be focused into a prism. The prism will separate out those wavelengths. Now here is what happens with hydrogen. You do not see all the colors of the rainbow there. You only see very discrete lines, okay? Now down on the purple end, okay, down here we see the, the um, shorter wavelength light, okay? And over here is the red, and those are the longer wavelength of the visible spectrum. This is what hydrogen spectrum looks like, actually, when it passes through these slits. We see certain lines there. Now these are not the only lines, but they're the only lines that are in the visible spectrum. So, before we go to the next slide, this is what they observed. They observed that there is some connection between the light, the energy passing through, the electrons within that hydrogen gas, and the light that we see. So once again, a scientist observed something. The observation is not the end all be all. We want to explain why. Why do we have these lines? And Bohr was the scientist who came along and said, Here's what I think is happening. What he thought was happening is that electrons could only have specific, and again we have this idea of quantized. An electron can only have specific 
quantize energy values. And that's what's being represented in this model. That an electron can be in this region here. Okay, let me zoom in on that space right there. The electron could maybe be here at what we call n equals one. The electron could be here. The electron could be here. The electron could be here. But what he was proposing is that it could be nowhere in between. Okay, it can't be here. It could be here or here or here. Okay, just like my hand is jumping. Boom. And it's not moving in between them, it's just jumping, right? That's pretty cool. Boom. Okay, so that's what he proposed. How does this, we'll keep on going. So once the electron is in an energy state that's higher up, light is emitted when the electron moves from one energy level to another. And actually it has to be from one energy level down, closer to the nucleus. That's going to emit light. All right, before I kind of talk you through the diagram, he came up with these principal quantum numbers, one, two, three, this is where the electrons can be. He called this one n equals one, n equal two, n equal three, n equal four. Okay, so now why do we see certain wavelengths? Well, let's say an electron is promoted up here and now it is further away from the nucleus. That electron of the hydrogen atom is further away. That electron doesn't want to be out here. It wants to be in the n equals one lowest energy state. So he can get rid of energy and he can move to a place closer by. He doesn't necessarily move to the n equal two stage, but that is one of his choices. And so this line represents the choice that electron now, choice indicates that he has a mind and then making a decision, but stick with me here. We'll use, um, we'll anthropomorphize our electrons. He's got choices. That electron could go to here, okay, go down to that stage, or it could go down to this stage, or it could go all the way down to the n equal two, or it could actually go all the way down to the n equals one. But the electron does one of them. And so we're representing that electron going from the n equals one to the n, I mean the n equal five down to the n equal two in that journey. Now he won't stop there. Once he gets there, he's also gonna pop down to the n equals one. But we're just focusing on this one electron going from here to here. To do that, he has to get rid of all the extra energy. So he has a, he has a lot of energy Oops, see if I can make it go, yeah. So he has a lot of energy when he's here. He has less energy when that electron is there, and all that extra energy has to go away. And so that energy gets emitted as a photon of light. And the energy of that photon of light is exactly the energy associated with that line in the color spectrum. Here's another electron. This electron went from the n equal four down to the n equal two. And that difference in energy between the electron there and down there in the n equals two is just the same amount of energy as the photon of light that's in that portion of the visible spectrum. Okay, and then this electron, as it goes down to the n equals two, is just right to be getting rid of energy in that. Okay, so let's see what's on the next screen. Yeah, so let's um, kind of look at my hands here for a minute and let's kind of examine what's going on. So an electron's here. Electron doesn't want to be further away from the nucleus. The nucleus is down here somewhere, okay? The electron is here and he wants to get down to the n equals one stage. He can move from one n level to another n level and work its way down to here. Every time it does a jump, it has to get rid of the energy. So let's say it just does this jump from here to here. He's got to get rid of this much energy. How does he do it? Well, he rolls down the window and he throws out one photon of light equal to the energy difference of that transition. He gets rid of all that energy and suddenly he's here instead. Now this would be so cool if we could do this when we're driving. So we're driving down the interstate, we see an officer down there, he's got his radar gun on us, we're going way too fast, so we roll down the window and get rid of all the extra energy, and suddenly we're at 70 miles an hour. Boom, just like that, that'd be cool. No, we can't do that. In the macroscopic world, in the world we live in, we have to slow down. We have to go through every possible speed before we're down to 70, and he's probably got us before we're there, okay? Even if we start braking, he's probably got us. 
But the electrons aren't that way. They're quantized. The electron can be here, it can be here. To go from here to here, all he has to do is get rid of the extra energy. He throws it out the window. It is one photon of light, boom. And there's all kinds of different choices. The ones that happen to be in the visible region for a hydrogen atom are where it comes from some upper state and it falls into the n equal 2 state. When it goes from some upper level to the n equal 2, it ends up being in the visible region. Now if it goes from some upper level to the n equals 1, that's a bigger bunch of, of energy it has to get rid of. It's a higher energy photon and it falls outside our visible region. If it's somewhere up here and it goes to the n equals 3 state, that's a lower amount of energy and it doesn't fall within the visible region. It just so happens that with a hydrogen atom, the region that we can see is when an electron goes from a high energy state down to the n equal 2 level. But every possible movement of an electron from a high energy level to a lower energy level, each one of those would have a different photon's frequency that can be emitted when it's given off. So we're starting to see a connection between the electronic structure of an atom and the evidence of it by visible light or outside of the visible region, electromagnetic radiation. The problem is, with the hydrogen atom, it's only got one electron. And with one electron, it's a very simplistic model. As soon as you put a second electron in there, it's not simplistic. And we have all sorts of different wavelengths of light that can be emitted that can't be simply explained by this. So we've got to keep on working. But this was the first concept of an atom, that an atom has a nucleus. It has these orbits that the electrons can move about. They can only be in certain orbits, and they, cannot go be they cannot be between them, but jump from one state to another. Simplistic. The idea of orbits is not what we're going to stick with, but it was a beginning understanding of the electronic structure of an atom.